Stephen K, congratulations. You guys have made it into the third and final round of this competition. Let me say this, you fellas can forge, man. You guys really brought your A game, but you're gonna have to step it up because now we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate this iconic weapon from history. The Rooster Head French Pioneer Sword. Gentlemen, good luck. We'll see you in four days. We're here in La Ronja, Louisiana, and I'm ready to get going. We're gonna try to whack this piece of metal out and get it into profile. I start off at the tip because it's probably the most demanding, and I work my way back from there. Traditionally, these blades have a slight saber-type bend in them, so I heat it up, and I whack it over the end of the anvil. I'm very tired, but I got the forging of my blade done. While I'm waiting for it to cool off, I'm just gonna go work on my rooster head pommel. I found this chicken head. I thought it would be perfect so I can make the mold to cast with bronze. I wasn't able to heat treat, but what I didn't get done on the blade, I got done on my molds, so still feel like I'm on track. So it's the morning of day two, and I've got a lot of work to do today. I have to cut my saw teeth into the back. Now I'm ready for the heat treat. This is proving a little more difficult than I thought it'd be to get an even heat. This blade isn't all the way hard. Can't turn in a blade that's half hard. I am screwed. So here we go again. I'm going to sit here and requench this and restraighten this until it's hard. There's some flames. That's what we want to see. I file test it skating like glass. That's a hard blade. I'm starting off the day grinding my fullers. Don't know how that's going to go. One danger of having a double-sided fuller is you can grind straight through your blade. And so I just kind of go down the blade and check and make sure I'm not doing that. I got to sharpen the saw back, too. I don't know what they're going to test this thing on. Hopefully, it'll hog away some stuff. Now that I'm done with that, it is time to heat treat. It's hard. Today, I'm going to try to conquer casting. This is my absolute first time doing any casting, so hopefully I can get it figured out. I want to cast three pieces. There's the guard piece, handle, and then there's the rooster-headed pommel. My first casting is just a piece of bronze that's going to be the guard with the upswept quillions. All right. That's way more than enough for a guard. I have the guard cast, which I'm pretty happy about. I have the handle cast. Then I got this rooster. I can see an eye. I can see the detailed feathers on this side. Friggin' sweet. This is a lot denser and heavier than I thought which I'm happy about because my blade is super forward heavy and I want that balance point to just get farther back on the blade. Going into day four, I have the three pieces of my handle, so my day tomorrow is gonna be tedious finish work. It's the morning of day four and today it's just putting it all together. By casting my rooster head and my guard. And if I may say, this is one bomb chicken head. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. <laughs> Handle comes next. That's about it. Everything's looking pretty good. <laughs> I got it forward. <laughs> All right, blade spits. Your blades look lovely, but are they deadly? I'm going to take your weapons and deliver some lethal cuts and slashes on this goat carcass. It's time to find out if they're ready for a cockfight or are they going to play chicken? Steve in the airport. You ready for this? Let's do it. All right, Steven, let's talk about your sword here. It's Beautiful looking, but it's a heavy sword. But that lends itself to deliver very deep cuts with every swing. And more importantly, it will kill. All right, Kate, your turn. So you ready? Yes, sir.
All right, kids, talk about your sword here. Your handle construction fits perfectly in my hand. Now, your edge is pristine, no glints, no rollings whatsoever, and most importantly, it'll keel. All right, gentlemen, welcome to the strength test, the log chop. Now, to test the strength and overall durability of your blades, I'll be chopping on this log. All right, Stephen, you're up first. Are you ready for this? Let's do it. All right, first off, Stephen, nice job on the castings. They're nicely done. Your handle, about an inch too long. It allows my hand to travel around a lot. Your blade took no damage whatsoever. Good job. Thanks. All right, Cade, you're up next. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, Cade, your blade, good condition. No rolls, no chips. Still sharp as it was when I started. Good job. All right, bladesmiths, this is the sharpest test the scarecrow saw and slice. Test the sawbacks on your weapon. I'll be sawing into the wooden dowels. Then I'll test the edge by cutting the watermelon and the sugar cane bundle. Steven, you're up first. You ready? Let's do it. All right, Steven, let's talk about your saw back here. Once it gets started, it starts to saw. It works. It's a functional saw back in there. You're able to dig into the dowel. Your edge is sharp. No issues cutting on the watermelon, and the weight alone is going to just chop that whole thing off. Overall, sir, it'll cut. Thank you. All right, Cade, your turn. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, Cade, the saw back. These teeth are sharp. Even at the start, it already digs in. A couple of slices in there, it's already digging right into the wooden double. Your edge, no issues whatsoever. Cuts to the watermelon and cuts the rest of the sugar cane bundles. Overall, sir, it'll cut. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, the weapons tests are complete, and the judges literally had to weigh the details. The new Forged and Fire champion is. Okay, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion. Steven, your blade is two pounds heavier than Cade's blade, making it less wieldy. Additionally, your handle is a little bit out of proportion with the blade, and it's for that reason that you cannot be the Forge and Fire champion. Come on forward, my friend. Even though I feel somewhat defeated right now, I'm still proud of what I've done, and I'm proud of what I turned in. The beast, man, well done. Thank you. You're a great competitor. Thank you. Steven was cast as much as I'm not going to say I'm going to go home and start making swords, um, but I did really enjoy the whole process, and it also taught me what I could do in a short amount of time. Not that it's my best work, but I'm proud of myself for not giving up there. Okay, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000. How do you feel right now? Cockle diddle doo. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, my friend. You made a fine rooster headed French pioneer sword. Come on forward and shake our hand. I am super psyched right now. I am so proud of myself, and I thank God that I had this opportunity. I got to keep working hard and keep on trying to climb that ladder, you know? 10 grand is college funds. 